is so embarrassing. It's always, let's do the square dancing competition. It's always, let's do the laundry detergent commercial. It's always, let's, let's enter the singing competition because of, because I ran into the, the family portrait that, that we all posed for and, and I broke it because I didn't wear my glasses because they make me look stupid. But, you know what? And don't even get me started. I'm Peter. It's always pork chops and apple sauce. Pork chops and apple sauce. I'm sick of pork chops and apple sauce, but we have to let him say it because it's his self esteem and he's the middle child. Well, you know what? I'm the middle child too. What about my self esteem? It's always pork chops, pork chops, pork chops, pork chops, pork chops. Well, they underestimate me. And you know what? It's time. It's time to change. Here we go. Welcome to Living Figuratively. This is the show that asks the question, why not fill your home with the fascinating faces and figures of people that you don't even know? Why not fill your home with figurative arts? Each week, I show you work from my collection or my own work. Um, in this case, tonight, we're actually taking a show on the road for the first edition of Shopping the Art Shows. Um, we're coming to Hedge Gallery at the 78th Street Studios to see Sarah Curry's show underestimated. So why did I bring you, why did I bring you to see this show? Because it's awesome and because it's figurative, which is kind of rare in these parts in Cleveland. We don't often see figurative shows. Um, but Sarah Curry, one of her, the distinction of Sarah Curry is she is a high school art teacher and she is the best kind of high school art teacher because she gets involved with her students' lives. She sees the ups, the downs, the, the, the you know, emotional roller coasters that happen, the problems that they deal with, their triumphs that they deal with, and she uses it to inspire her art, which this whole show essentially is teenage girls that are underestimated, and many of them are her students that have posed for her. And she brings this lovely dignity to them um, but instead of me standing in one place and talking, let's walk around the show at the fabulous Hedge Gallery. Let's come on over here. I'm gonna show you, show you one of my, one of my first favorites here. Okay, this one, it's called Shot Down. Here, I'm gonna get, get a little bit closer to it. It's called Shot Down, and there's a red dot on it. So in art world, art gallery world, that means that the painting has been sold. So that means it's no longer available, but it's still hanging in the show until December 4th, because that's when the show comes down, uh, so that we can all still enjoy it, but it's already sold. And when you come to Hedge Gallery, if there is a piece that interests you, you find the gallery director who is right there in her office, right behind us, and say, hey, I wanna buy this. She'll take your credit card, you buy the piece, and then you arrange for delivery or come back and pick it up at the end of the show, it's that easy. This particular piece right now, uh, I was drawn to it when I saw it. It's called Shot Down because I think it speaks to the, the, the sort of ever-present fear that kids in school these days have, which is the whole active shooter drill. I mean, they, you know, back when school was still in session instead of, you know, all online now, um, active shooter drills happen all the time. And I think it's kind of a defense mechanism for kids to sort of treat it lightly because otherwise, what are you gonna do? Live in fear. So this whole shot down, being casual about it, 
Um, and the, the maybe the double entendre where, you know, maybe they're going to break up. Maybe he suggested something. Maybe she shot the idea down. Um, it treats it with lightness and also with some good gravitas. Uh, so I, I really like this piece. And obviously somebody else did because somebody else somebody else bought it. All right, let's take a little, little more walk around here. The Hedge Gallery, it's in the 78th Street Studios, which used to be the American Greetings creative, um, uh, creative workspaces, and then it's been other things too in the meantime, so it's been, you know, warehousey and stuff like that, so it's got that sort of gritty studio um, feel to it, and uh, so here's another piece right here. This one, I actually researched ahead of time because I went online because the whole show is online on the Hedge Gallery's website. Um, and I was gonna talk about it because at the time it was available, but now I see that it also has a red, red dot on it. This painting is called Three's a Crowd. And what, one of the things I particularly loved about it is it speaks to that teenage concept where you don't fit in where maybe your two best friends have now become best friends with each other and you no longer are part of it. Uh, but the one who is facing us also has this quiet dignity where, you know, maybe she's okay with it or she's working on being okay with it and fitting into this particular social group isn't the all and end all. Um, so that's, that's one of the reasons why that particular work was just clicked with me. Um, we're going to move over here. One of the, the themes in Sarah Curry's work is the, the doing of the hair. Uh, it, the word underestimate, the show title underestimated, basically it, it, um, it talks about fem girls, young girls doing things that may be perceived as superficial or small or insignificant, but that we underestimate the great power that goes behind it um, and that the great people that they are growing up to become. The doing of the hair, that's one of the female rituals, especially with um, young black girls who, you know, there's, there's more mutual doing the hair. And it, there's a um, sort of a, a nurturing female feel to it where you're, you're sitting quietly talking, strategizing, gossiping, which is another word that don't even get me started on the word gossiping because that's sort of the female, in fact, I shouldn't have even used that word because to me that's sort of the female slam to having discussions that are, you know, like interesting top level strategizing discussions, but when women have them, it's gossiping. So I'm not even gonna, I kind of want to undo that word, but, um, and so th this sort of methodical female nurturing act of caring for each other is embodied by the doing, the doing of the hair. And so she's got various different, different things where, you know, the hair is being, being worked on quite, you know, whether the hair is, it's like being pulled and tethered, um, whether the hair is long and this sort of extra, you know, being pulled back by it. This one, this one right here is called check yourself, like where potentially the, you know, the hair in this is the control that people have on you. And maybe it's, you know, they're controlling you more than you want them to be and you're checking yourself. Um, one of my favorite ones here is disrupted, which really has a lot of the, um, the, the working the working on the hair, the sensitive faces that have all the different expressions and disrupted. I don't know what this actually means, but I um, I bring a lot of, th this brings a lot of emotions to the viewer um, that you can that you can apply to it uh, without knowing the actual story behind these actual, actual girls. Um, so the doing of the hair, that's a symbolic female thing that, that uh, Sarah uses in her work. Um, another characteristically female thing, of 
teenage girls that are underestimated is the selfie. As you saw me taking my, you know, 1970s selfies in the bathroom, um, nowadays the selfie is the thing where women, young girls will basically take selfies, post them, take selfies, post them, try to get likes, you know, try to get people to say you're gorgeous and stuff like that. Um, so she has done this whole series in this room. And all of these, just as an interesting note, were done um, during the COVID lockdowns. She was still teaching her high school class remotely, but also working on these pieces. Um, this is the, it's essentially the, the room with where she honors these teenage girls doing the selfies. Now, selfies, you know, I'm gonna, here, let's, let's go over here. These two are like some excellent ones here. Um, so the whole concept of the selfie, on the one hand, it's, you know, it, it can be seen as this superficial thing where, you know, girls try to look sexy, they do the, you know, the duck pout lip thing, and, um, and then try to become popular and, you know, get as many likes as they can. So it's this superficial thing. But the other way to look at it is, it is the ultimate form of choosing your own identity and the image that you want to project to the world. So like when you're taking a selfie, you get to see exactly what you look like while you're doing it. It's, it's I, would, I would put it closer to an artist creating a self-portrait. And since many of these girls maybe were in Sarah's art class, maybe they are artists that create their own self-portraits. But you know, the phone selfie, it's, it's a quick way to make your own self-portrait. So it's really, it's quite um, a good manifestation of this female gaze. So how you see yourself is actually how the world sees you, as opposed to somebody else choosing to see you a certain way and then depicting you that way or talking about you that way or presenting you that way or writing about you that way. You, with a selfie, you get to choose your own identity and you take a million of them and you pick the best one. So it really is, I think, a potentially, used in the right way, a potentially positive thing for young people to do, just to you know, present themselves to the world. Now, Sarah has taken that whole concept and made these beautiful works very universal by taking the actual camera or phone out of the picture. So there are no phones in these pictures. She's made them universal by, you know, she shows the hands, which is perfect, and she shows where the phone would be, but there is no phone. And the, the girls, they, it's basically all about the faces and hands, which speaks to my particular artist's sensibility, because I like doing faces, I like doing hands, I don't like doing a whole lot of else. Um, but what she's done is she, the, the flocking, the black background and the flocking um, serve to sort of make it universal. And all the sort of uh, contemporary things and sort of the, the mechanical objects of today have been eliminated from it in a very, very elegant way. And flocking, for those of you who don't know what flocking is, it's actually little particles of velvet that are stuck to a surface. So you probably have things at home that are flocked. And um, it's a, there's a process, I saw her you know, do a video where she shows how the flocking actually works, where there's like sticky stuff and then you just put the powder on it and it, that's the little, the little velvet particles. And then you get this nice velvety, luxurious sheen on the work. And um, some, some of them are just, they're just so gorgeous and special. This one in particular right here, I'm a little bit surprised that it has not been snapped up yet because the price is super reasonable. This one is called Numi, and it's just beautiful. It's the dark background, and then her dark hair and skin are not, it shows that it's not nearly as dark as the dark background, but it's just, you know, beautifully painted that one little highlight in the eye, the little highlight on her lips. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a stunning piece. And some of these ones with the flocking with a pattern on it, which 
I'm sure that was a little bit of a pain and a trick to to achieve that, but it's the it's the black on black where she's got the matte black and then she's got the flocked black. I really want to touch it, but I won't. Um, but if you buy it, then you'll have it in your home and then you can touch it. But you shouldn't because you might have grease on your hands or like wash your hands. Anyway. Gorgeous works here in the selfie selfie gallery. Let's walk on over and we will see the monoprints. All right, right here, okay, this one is a drawing. And this drawing right here is, in, in figurative art, one of the, the big challenges all the time is to try to find new human positions and poses to paint and to draw. Because it's like they've all been done before. They've all been done before. And it, when you can find a new human position that profoundly expresses something iconic or, you know, like a, like a, 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 a thing that that uh, an emotion that everybody can feel, it's really, really rare. And those are the ones that stick with you. This particular piece, it's called, I'm gonna read it, it's called Ups and Downs. And it's two figures and it's four figures. And it's shadows and it, it shows the weight of people pulling each other down, pulling each other up, friendship, love, um, but, but there's a little bit of a gripping violence to it. So it's like a not, it's not clear that it's friendship and helping or pulling each other down um, and hurting each other. So there's a, it, there's a tension to it. And it actually kind of reminds me of uh, Kathy Kolowitz, who, if you don't know who she is, look her up. Her, she's got some gorgeous, gorgeous charcoal, charcoal drawings. And even the way that it sits on the page that makes it this just fabulous composition. So I can understand why when Sarah came up with this drawing, she wanted to capitalize on that image and make some monoprints from it. So what she has here, this is a monoprint. It's a smaller version. And if you remember from my printmaking episode, a monoprint is, you know, as the title suggests, a print that that's the only one that there is like that. You take an image, you do things to it, you run it through the press, and you have, you have that image, and then you take your plate and you do more things to it to change it, and you run that through again. So then the next image that you've gotten off the press is something different, and then the next image after that is something different. And so she's got one framed here, but then in the print, Flipper. I don't even. I can't even remember now what this is called. She's got a couple, couple others of the same same image right here. So this one's got some lace involved in it, which made some imprints for the monoprint. This one right here is in red, and um, it, you know, so she's changed it, but it's still the same. You know, the same very iconic image. This one right here, which I think is my favorite. It's a darker, darker background, and um, it's it, these are just beautiful. In fact, there's there's four of them. So anybody that wanted to do something really kind of cool, you could get maybe three, all four, or two of them, because they're different enough, and yet they're the same. And wouldn't that be nice to like put on either side of the fireplace, or either side of the couch, or two over the couch? It's it's a uh, it's a nice way to fill up some fill up some really good space with two two beautiful drawings, and these are so super reasonably priced. Um, and the prints that are in the flipper, if you walk in, you can buy it and walk out with it. Unlike the other pieces in the show, have to stay here until December fourth if you purchase them. But that's why they get the red dot, and um, the gallery can deliver it to you, pack and ship it. You know, if you're far away. And there's also the website. They have the website with every single one of these pieces on it. So we will see because I'm actually leaning towards getting one of these and I'm not sure which one. Um, so maybe you'll see next week which one I do get. 
and maybe you'll sneak into the website right now while I'm driving home and get it for me. And uh, if that's if that's the way it goes, I will just have to accept accept the results that you know I've been I've been scooped on it. Uh, that's what we do. We just accept it graciously, and maybe there's another piece that uh, that would interest me. Um, so those are the monoprints, which are beautiful. And I want to thank everybody now for joining me tonight for Living Figuratively at the awesome Hedge Gallery for Sarah, Sarah Curry's show, Underestimated. Anybody, you can come by anytime. You don't even have to make an appointment um, because right now the gallery is open and it's this empty. So social distancing is definitely a thing you can take advantage of here right now. And going to an art show is just a wonderful, wonderful thing to do in these days where there's no more movies, where restaurants are a little scary, where, um, you know, the public places that we normally go have fun just aren't, aren't there. Art shows are notoriously empty even during non-COVID times. So right now, there, it's just wonderful because you can look at everything, you can discuss it with your friends, and you can have like a really satisfying, you know, satisfying afternoon. At 78th Street Studios, there's tons of other galleries. Some are open, some are not. All the information is on my website. Go to my website and you can get the, you know, see what else is here at 78th Street Studios, see what the hours are for uh, Hedge Gallery, and come on down and take a look at everything and perhaps even enrich your life by taking something, taking something home. Um, so thank you for joining me for Living Figuratively. Next week, same bad time, same bad channel, the episode will be Love Athena, part three, the 2020 Pam Redo. Um, we'll visit, revisit my Love Athena painting, which I have made some changes to, and you'll see why I made the changes. And, um, oh, and I know you guys have been waiting for it, so now I'll say it. It's always Marcia. Marcia, Marcia, Marcia. See you next week.